Welcome back to the third part of our story on transsexual Leona Lo, who is staging a play called The Aqua Show to educate the public on transsexuality. Leona Lo, who used to be Leonard Lo, knew she wanted to change her gender from a very young age. Topping his primary school classes year after year, Leonard went on to study at the all-boys school Catholic High and then the distinguished Hua Chang Junior College. But despite acing his exams year after year, Leonard was far from happy. He desperately wanted to be a woman and wanted the world to see him as a woman. He eventually went for gender reassignment surgery in 1997 at the age of 21. But life continued to be tough as she recounts in her play. Here she gives us a glimpse of her growing up years. I was depressed most of the time. I was very depressed. I was very depressed because I was in like predominantly all boys school, um, like Catholic high, and then I went to Wa Chong Junior College. But but even you then, never you always felt that you couldn't fit in. Or? I couldn't fit in. I couldn't tell anyone. I mean, we kn- we knew what gays were, but but I wasn't gay. I I was like a boy wanting to become a woman, and and who had heard about something like that in the eighties? Nobody. They were just strange, fabulous creatures that maybe existed in the West only. Fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> I always saw them as fabulous because um, the, the Western like transsexual role models then were always models. You had April Ashley. You had the, the blonde girl, Carolyn Corsi. Uh, not blonde girl, the Bond girl who was in James Bond. And, and um, they were all fabulous role models in that sense. And... and there was no one I, who could identify with my, my, my condition in school and I, I talked to teachers and, and counsellors and they said, oh no. It's what did they tell you? It's just a face that would pass. Yeah. Yeah. But um, it was definitely not passing for me. You know, uh, even when I went to, to national service, it was definitely still there. Was national service very hard as well? The national service story is, is played out a great deal in... In, in my um, in my play itself, uh, because that was really the turning point for me when I admitted, and everyone around me heard for the first time that I was a transsexual, and and it was very difficult for my parents because I was this from the whole family. My my grandpa used to photocopy my report book, and he would show it to the rest of my cousins and say that you must they must be like me because I did well in school. And, and suddenly I, I fell from the pedestal. I was this, this horrible, horrible creature. And, and the only person at that time, strangely enough, especially when I came back from, from, from England, who, who could accept me wholeheartedly, that was my, my grandmother. The first thing she said was, can you use a hairband? Your hair is so messy. And, and, and you know, I think you should, we should buy you this, you know, you, you have got poor dress sense and I think you should dress better and all that sort of thing. And, and that was really, really heartwarming and really, really touching. Is that in the play too? No, that's not in the play. But my parents' reactions were. And, and my poor parents, they were like a conservative, like Chinese parents who whom everyone said, wow, your son will, will really do well, he'll, he'll really get scholarships, he'll really be a successful lawyer or whatever it is. But, but I, I turned out to be like this. And it was really hard for them. It was really hard for them. And it's really a mark of their love for me that they are able to, that we have, you know, we are such a happy family today. So things between you and your parents have been... It's fabulous. Better. It's fabulous now. My mum will tell me where to get eyeshadow. Uh, hey, she will say, "Oh, there's a discount here now." And then, and uh, oh, you you really should wear that belt. I bought it like twenty years ago, and it's 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 a classic. You know, you, you really should wear that belt now. And, and <laughs> we are very happy. My sister, she's in university, and and her friends say, "Hey, your sister just appeared in uh, Q magazine last week. You know, uh, do you want us to cut uh, buy the magazine for you?" <laughs> it's it's really, I I'm very happy, but I also know that um, there are a lot of you who are struggling the way I was struggling 20 years ago, and it's my duty right now to 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 speak out for them. How long did it take for your parents to come to terms with? Oh yes, sexuality? I would say that ten. 15 years and what eventually made them accept you for who you are that I I perhaps was was willing to to finish 
my my studies, find work, um, work hard, and 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 give them um, an allowance every month, like any dutiful child. And they saw that hey, I'm I'm the same person, just packaged differently. That's all. Tell us about the highlights of your play. It's it's an interesting play in the sense that we call it the Aqua Show, and there's been a lot of uh, debate on why do you want to call it that? It's it's, it's a pejorative term and it's a slur. Uh, I call it that because there are lots of transsexuals who are still being called Aqua today, and I I wanted people to discuss why is it that we're still labeling people who are different. And that's addressed in the play. It's, it's about my life, about my life in Hua Chong and Catholic High. We're still trying to get the Hua Chong School song, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, about, my, about my life in National Service, about broken relationships. How, by and large, a lot of us still have broken relationships because a lot of men still don't understand, and and there's a lot of stigma attached to it. And how, uh, you know, I've taken my search for it's the humorous part, my search for love. Online, you know, but I'm very honest about who I am, and then I'll see like, okay, which are the guys who, and who write to me, and and I, interesting thing is, until now, you know, it's still the Angmos who write, you know, like sorry, the Caucasian guys who who write and say no problems. In the next clip, we speak to people on the streets who tell us what they really think of transsexuals.